This tangle of silk is the home of one of Australia's most feared spiders, the highly venomous redback. Despite its appearance, this web is actually highly complex and very finely engineered. It contains some of the strongest silk produced by any spider. So strong that she can catch and transport prey far larger than herself. First, she winds strands of silk around the struggling beetle to immobilize it. When the beetle tires, she bites. She must pull her victim up to the part of the web where she lives. She starts snipping and reattaching the lines of silk. These lines are under tension. They're spring-loaded, and that allows the redback to haul huge weights around her web. The tiny male watches as she retrieves her catch. Spider silk is as stretchy as elastic, but harder to snap than steel. As day turns to night and the forests plunge into darkness, nocturnal predators are coming out to hunt. One of them is Dinopis, the ochre-faced spider. She is found throughout the tropics, and she uses silk in a very different way. She has turned it into a net. Her stick-like body makes her hard to spot amongst the branches. Her huge central pair of eyes are 2,000 times more sensitive than ours. And to keep it that way, she completely rebuilds the retina at the back of each eye every single day they enable her to hunt in almost complete darkness. She hangs an inch or so above the forest floor from a series of silk lines. She strikes. She stretches a net over her prey and then wraps it in silk to immobilize it. At last, she begins the slow process of digesting her meal. For her prey, at least, the end is quick. Her fast-acting venom kills almost instantly. But venom can have other uses, and some victims are not so lucky. This stick insect relies on camouflage to make it invisible. But that too comes at a cost. Being shaped like a stick makes it difficult to fly. So if a predator does find it, it could be done for. A 
Huntsman Spider, and it's ready to strike. It's one of the fastest and most agile of all spiders. But the stick insect doesn't even try to escape. She has a weapon of last resort. A milky substance from the glands behind her head. The spray can reach half a metre, and she'll have enough to have a few goes before running dry. It fills the forest with the scent of peppermint. To the huntsman, it's an unbearable irritant. So the stick insect is free to graze in peace. Spiders are usually solitary, but these spiders are different. They're social. They live in groups of up to a hundred, and they're all related, brothers and sisters, parents, uncles and aunts, all on the same web. They live side by side and hunt together. Here, too, the mothers care for their young. Once these eggs are hatched, she'll feed the spiderlings by regurgitating food until they're old enough to hunt for themselves. For now, with so many spiders guarding the web, it's safe for her to leave the eggs in search of food. This mantis is far too large for any single spider to attack. So instead, they collaborate. All the nearby spiders help to hold it down. Even the smaller, young spiders lend a hand. Eventually, when their prey is exhausted, the spiders feed. It's not unusual for spiderlings to eat the bodies of older spiders that have died in the web. In fact, in some species of social spider, the mother always dies when the spiderlings hatch and they feed on her corpse. So the generations pass and the family thrives. This vast web will persist for perhaps five years until eventually the family moves on. By living together as an extended family and all looking out for each other, these social spiders have helped guarantee their survival. But some insects have taken this practice a stage further. Family members have begun to specialize. 